Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make some church ornaments from wood shims and we're going to make different styles of them. Now if you go on Pinterest, you'll see all different uh, shapes of churches and more often than not, they're just very simple uh, patterns. So you can just kind of make your own, own, which is what I'm doing here. Now I'm using wood shims because for one, they're easy to get. They're not very expensive, uh, but also one side of them is very thin. And so it makes it easier to cut with scissors. And I'm using an old pair of scissors that are already pretty dull. And that's what you want to use. You don't want to use your good scissors for this. Now it's funny that this is the first one that I'm cutting because this is the one that I didn't get to finish today. Uh, but I'm still gonna show you this shape. But my favorites are the more simple styles. And how I do most of them is um, I just cut them in the shape of a house. And uh, the only difference is uh, I make the slope of the roof, roof much, uh, much more pitched. Uh, so, and then what I do to keep, put these together is I just take a um, piece of that same stick, and you could use popsicle sticks for this if you wanted, but I just cut a piece of that and I glue it on. And I just use hot glue because this is all very lightweight wood. So um, the hot glue will hold it great. Um, I actually needed to take a couple of them apart and it's very hard. So, um, so no need to use wood glue on this. And here is a very simple shaped one. Again, I'm just going to make a roof pitch on this. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it and then I just cut the other side to match it. And you can just take your first side and trace it onto the other side and cut. But as you can see, that's a sharper roof pitch than you would really want on a house. Now you could make these as small or as large as you want. I'm actually kind of doing not just different shapes, but also different sizes. But they're all going to be ornament uh, sizes. So um, now I'm going to make uh, a couple of different church patterns uh, as mantle churches. And um, so they'll be larger than this. And I'm going to do just a couple of different patterns. And that's probably what my next video will be. Um, but uh, and those will be made out of fence panels. And you could use old fence panels or new ones. I'm going to be making mine out of new ones. Uh, but that's a very economical wood to use. And it's lightweight, but it's sturdy enough uh, to use for decor. As you can see here, these are so, so simple to make. Now for this next one, I'm using three of the sticks. And I'm making my roof pitch even higher. Again, we're just creating these as we go, and there's really no right or wrong. Uh, primitive shapes are very easy, and so the primitive shape of a church is super, super simple. Again, uh, most everything that I'm cutting, I'm just cutting with scissors. Now, sometimes these get thick, and if they get too thick, um, I used a table saw to cut some of mine. Uh, but for the most part, you could just use scissors on these. But again, don't use your good scissors. So I just made a bunch of these up. And uh, all of these won't make it into this video. But I'll do several to show you what I do. And again, I'm just going to keep these very, very simple. And if you try to do too much decorating on these, then you take away that primitive look. And I... I don't want to do that. So once I got several of these cut and put together, I'm just taking my little finger sander and sanding those edges smooth. And it's very easy to sand uh, because this is very soft wood. And now I'm staining all of these uh, with 
the color coffee bean, but what I did was I took uh, the paint and I mixed it about uh, one part paint and two parts water to make it more liquidy and that makes it into a stain and this could actually even be thinned more uh, because when I wipe this off it looks more like a stain but when I'm not wiping it off it looks a little bit like a paint and I'm, I'm going for the stained look here in this case it actually doesn't matter that much though because this is going to be a base color um, I'll still have this color on the back of the ornament. So, um, again, it could have been thinned down just a little bit more. And I think at some point I do thin it down some. But I'm, I'm painting this over both the front and the back and around all the edges. Now I'm going to use joint compound on this one because I want it to look kind of like an old stucco church. Uh, so I'm using a small brush to kind of brush the shape of the door and the windows. Uh, otherwise, I would just take a putty knife and just, uh, just kind of spread it all over the front side of it. Now, I don't add this to the back, and I don't even add it to the sides. But I'm just kind of tracing out my shape. Now, I could have done this with paint, or I could have... Uh, done it with um i guess i could have drawn drawn it on with a pencil but either way it would have to be outlined with this so um, i just did it with this to save that step and then when i get these traced out then i'm just gonna um, brush it over the whole area and i'm just brushing it on very thick and um I'll even, once this dries, add another coat if it needs it. And I think this one did. So I do this finish to some of them. Uh, and some of these, uh, I took some of this joint compound and rubbed it on, spread it on them, and then scraped it off. And that gave it an interesting finish and, and made it look almost like a weathered wood look. And I'm doing that same stucco finish to this one as well. And this one, I'm just kind of uh, dry brushing some of the, the color buttercream uh, over the top of this. And actually, I said I was dry brushing this. I'm actually not dry brushing this one. I've got enough paint on the brush. But instead of holding my brush up, I'm kind of laying it down and dragging that across. And what that does is almost like a dry brush, but you're, you have some thicker places of paint and it, it gives it a little bit more of a chippy look. And I'm doing that same finish to this one. And I'm actually adding quite a bit of paint on my brush here and then just kind of dragging it across. And what that does is it gets more heavy on the high spots and then uh, real sparse uh, where it isn't quite as smooth. And here I'm doing a little extra sanding because uh, I wanted more of that wood to show through. So uh, on some of these, I do extra sanding around the edges. And on some of them, I even take a little knife and kind of scrape up some little areas so that I have uh, some of the brown showing in the background because obviously you can't really uh, distress these as well. And I made a tiny little wreath here and I'm going to add to this one. And I just did that by gluing some little pieces from a pick together. And I just kind of twisted it into a circle and just kind of kept adding little little bitty pieces until I got the size wreath that I wanted and this one I'm doing a little stenciling on I just took some of the words on this small stencil and um, stenciled those on I'll be adding more to that later now I didn't get to film all of these I had a busy day in the store today but I can easily tell you what I did to to these so with this one I took a tongue depressor and uh, cut the length of the door that I needed. So I already had that round top and then I stained it 
and then I just painted on just some plain windows. Again, I don't want to get too detailed because I don't want to take away the primitive look. I took another tongue depressor and cut a shorter section on it and painted it white and then stamped up some little scripture on it. And that's my top window there. And now I, I'm taking some sticks that I found in the yard and I'm just hot gluing those on the roof line. Now I didn't add these to all of them. I just, again, I wanted a lot of different looks here and I wanted to keep them all very, very simple and very primitive. So uh, you don't have to worry about these roofs being perfect. So these little twigs that are not exactly straight are just perfect and I'm just using wire cutters to cut them and again I just glue that on. Now what I do to hang these is uh, I drill a hole in each side of the roof and on this one I think I went uh, two or three inches down and then just drill the hole and then I fed some rusty wire through it and connected it to both sides and did uh, just a very rustic wire hanger and I think I did that on most of these. Now because I'm working with sticks that are not perfectly straight, um, I, sometimes the curve is not the way I want it so that I'm not getting enough contact and so that's why I pulled this off and restuck it. Now, if I had let that dry too long though, it would, it would be really, really hard to come off. Um, and here I am taking my glue and kind of filling in where there's a gap behind it. And um, I'm gonna be covering that up, but I wanted to, to make sure that it got good contact. And now I'm taking some of that joint compound and just kind of very roughly rubbing it across the top. So that's going to hide that extra glue and it's just going to look like a snow covered roof. Now you don't want this to be perfect. Again, you just want to, to have the effect of that snow heaped up on the top of it. But I just really like the look of this one. I think it has a very, very... Uh, country look to it and now I'm adding a little bit of snow just on the top of that door anywhere that the snow might have settled and this is one that's out of frame but I'm doing the same thing to it now I didn't add a roof to this one uh, so I'm just adding that joint compound over the top on a lot of these churches I added a cross that I made out of twigs the only problem is you almost have to make that out of little pieces of bark because uh, you don't want that top piece that crosses over the, the vertical one uh, to, to stand out too much. So uh, that was the issue with that was just finding wood that I could use that for. And then when I added my snow, I let some of that go over the top of the, the cross as well. But here I've already added my wire to this one. And so this is how I hung um, most of these. These old primitive churches may not be your thing, but I do have uh, several people who come in my store who love primitive ornaments. And I just happen to be one of those actually. And at least one of these will be added to my personal tree. Now, when all of these are dry, I will take a clear matte uh, finish and uh, brush over the top of these just to get everything sealed in. But these are a fun project to do because you don't have to stress much over them. This was one of the stucco ones that I added a twig cross to and took a popsicle stick, actually a tongue depressor, and made a little sign with a stamp to go over the doors. Actually, to go over the door and the windows. This one got a square door that I used a tongue depressor for and uh, the top of a tongue depressor for the window and added a cross to this one. And this one was similar. 
And I had a lot more of these that I planned to do today, but again, the store got busy, so um, I didn't get nearly all of them finished. But here are the ones that, that I did. And I hope you guys will try and make some and uh, see how simple they are to make. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.